Okay, so I'm explaining Ephesians chapter number 6. Ephesians chapter number 6. From verse number 10 to verse number 13. That's our scripture. So I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that Christianity is a spiritual life. And the reason why many Christians today, they're failing to make it in life, it is because they fight their battles physically instead of fighting them spiritually. Many people today, they're being tormented as a result of evil spirits. They are harassed by evil spirits. But I want you to know that it is God's will for you to prosper. It is God's will for you to enjoy life. It is God's will for you to live a happy life. But it is only that the devil wants to destroy your influence. He wants to destroy your potential. He wants to bury your potential. He wants to destroy your family. So ladies and gentlemen, I know that many of you have tried all strategies. But still you are not making it in life. I want you to look at the spiritual side of the matter. Because remember, our warfare is not physical, but our warfare is spiritual. I want you to know that life is a battlefield and not a playground. Each and every day that you live, I want you to know that life, it is a war zone. Life is a battlefield. It is not a playground. The warfare you are engaged in is not physical, but it is spiritual in nature. And I want you to know that without engaging in spiritual warfare, many people will die without possessing their possession. Without engaging yourself in spiritual warfare, many people will die without inheriting their inheritance. Many people will die living a life of disgrace, a life of humiliation, a life full of disappointments and misery because you are not engaging yourself in spiritual warfare. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that spiritual warfare, it is the fight to fulfill purpose. When we talk of spiritual warfare, it is the fight to fulfill destiny. It is the fight to become all that God wants you to become. In other words, every time when we engage ourselves in spiritual warfare, we are fighting a battle in the realm of the spirit so that we can become all that God wants us to become. So if God said you are supposed to make it in 2021, so we are engaging ourselves in spiritual warfare. We are enforcing the promises of God over our lives so that I become all that God wants me to become. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that when you get born again, things will not happen automatically in your life. Many Christians have a tendency of thinking that when they become born again, when they receive Jesus as the personal Lord and Savior of their lives, things will be automatic. Prosperity will be automatic. Success will be automatic. But I want you to know that things will not happen automatically in your life. But you need to learn to engage your life in spiritual warfare. And as far as the devil is concerned, he knows that you are a threat. And you need to be stopped. That's the reason why the devil is fighting you. Many people they are being attacked by the devil left, right and center. It is because in the kingdom of darkness, they know that you are a threat to their kingdom. You are a solution to your family. You are a blessing to your nation. So the devil will try to stop you. But by the spirit of God, I'm here to declare that you are unstoppable. Do I have a witness in the house today? So the devil knows that you are a threat. So each and every day of your life, don't underestimate yourself. You need to know, you need to have this consciousness that you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. The reason why you are a threat, it is because the greater is he that is inside of you than he that is in the world. So the devil is afraid of you. The devil is scared of you. Do you know that even witches and wizards, they are afraid of you? That is the reason why they come at night when you are asleep. They don't come during the day because they are afraid of you. I want you to know that you carry authority. You carry power. 
you have influence over the kingdom of darkness so today we want to exercise our authority in christ jesus i am looking for radical young men and women who are ready to stand with me today and say men of god we want to exercise our authority against every spiritual husband we want to exercise our authority against every witch against every wizard against every juju or omishonga we are going to exercise our authority hallelujah the devil is afraid of the person that you will become he knows that you are a great person he knows that prosperity is yours he knows that your children are intelligent so he's afraid of that and he doesn't want the promises of god to be fulfilled in your life but by the reason of this message i am here to declare that every prophetic dream that you once encountered it is going to materialize in the name of jesus christ the bible says his promises they are yes and amen in the christ jesus i am here to decree and declare that whatsoever the lord has said concerning your life it is going to be accomplished it is going to be fulfilled not tomorrow but today you are going to become all that god wants you to become if you are born again i want you to know that you have what it takes to stand against the devil as long as you are born again as long as you are alive in christ jesus you have what it takes to fight every contrary spirit you have what it takes to fight against the witches and wizards remember the bible says a thousand shall come and they shall fall by your side and the ten thousand they shall fall by your right hand side they shall not come near you behold with your eyes you shall see the reward of the wickedness i am here to decree and declare that you have what it takes to conquer the kingdom of darkness you have what it takes to conquer every territory of the enemy refuse to have fear the bible says you did not receive the spirit of fear but you received the spirit of power of love and of a sound mind i am here to tell you refuse to be a coward but i want you to be bold as a lion the bible says be bold as a lion remember our lord jesus he is the lion of the tribe of judah and you are a seed of that lion so be, be bold like a lion refuse to be a coward refuse to be controlled by evil spirits from today your life shall not be influenced by the enemy i want to tell you that yes your situation may seem utterly hopeless and without a solution but the bible says with hope you shall never be disappointed i want you to know that the word of god is what you need to prevail in any crisis the word of god is what you need for you to receive your deliverance the word of god is what you need for you to receive your healing the word of god is what you need for you to receive your breakthrough if you are expecting a breakthrough today what you need is the word of god remember the word of god is life the word of god is spirit and the word of god is active and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword so what you need is the word of god and the word of god has the ability it has the capacity to bring deliverance to your family if you are expecting deliverance today you need the word of god isaiah chapter 5 verse number 13 the bible says my people are in captivity because of lack of knowledge the reason why you are suffering it is because you lack knowledge it is because of ignorance the reason why you always encounter nightmares the reason why you always encounter ugly dreams it is because of ignorance the bible is saying my people my people are perishing because of lack of knowledge in other words my people are suffering because of lack of knowledge my people are sick because of lack of knowledge my people are poor because of lack of knowledge my people are struggling because of lack of knowledge so ignorance will cost you the reason why you are suffering it is because of lack of knowledge 
Many people today are failing to excel in life. Many people today, they are failing to achieve greatness. Many people's destinies and potentials have been buried by the devil because of ignorance. Because of ignorance. But today, the devil is a liar. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that if you read the Proverbs in chapter 11, verse number 9, the Bible says, through knowledge shall the justice be delivered. Meaning to say that a believer without knowledge will live a frustrated life. Because scripture is saying, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. If you are believing deliverance from God, it is only through knowledge. So ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. So if you are expecting deliverance today, you need the knowledge of the word of God. If you are expecting healing today, you need the knowledge of the word of God. Maybe you are jobless. You are believing God for a job. You are believing God for a promotion. Maybe you are a contract worker. You are believing God to become a permanent worker. All you need is the knowledge of the word of God. Once you acquire the knowledge of the word of God, I want you to know that the word of God has that ability to bring deliverance to your life. Only the truth of the word of God can set you free from every demonic bondage. Only the truth of the word of God can set you free from every satanic oppression. If you are experiencing satanic frustrations, I want you to know that it is only the truth of the word of God that can set you free. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So today, you are going to receive deliverance because of the truth of the word of God. Today, you are going to receive your healing because of the truth of the word of God. Today, you are going to receive your miracle because of the truth of the word of God. What is going to differentiate you from others? It is the truth of the word of God. And I want to decree and declare that in this year of 2021, you are going to achieve greatness because of the truth of the word of God. What you failed to do in the past, this year, you are going to do it because of the truth of the word of God. So only the truth of the word of God can set you free. Only the truth of the word of God can set you free. It is not laying of hands that can set you free. But the truth of the word of God. Never underestimate the power that is in the word of God. Never underestimate the authority of the word of God. The word of God has that power to demolish barriers. The word of God has got that power to demolish strongholds. The word of God has got that authority to demolish satanic covenants. All you need is the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that you need the word of God. And it is only the word of God that can set you free. I want you to know that the highest level of deliverance only happens as a result of the truth of the word of God. Deliverance only takes place when you are loaded with the knowledge of the word of God. If you want total deliverance, if you want absolute deliverance, the highest level of deliverance, it only takes place through the knowledge of the word of God. It's unfortunate that many Christians, when they come to church, they want the man of God to lay his hands on them. Yes, it's biblical. But the highest level of deliverance only takes place through the power of the word of God. So it is the word of God that can set you free. It is the word of God that can liberate you. If you are believing God for freedom, I want you to know that it is only the word of God that can give freedom to you. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3, the Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Yes, we walk in the flesh, but we do not fight against.
then it's the flesh we are in the world but we are not of this world we don't fight against the world though we are in the world but we fight against the spiritual host of wickedness in high places so according to second corinthians chapter 10 the bible says for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons the next verse says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal in other words the weapons of our warfare are not material they are not physical but they are mighty through god they are spiritual to the pulling down of strongholds and when we talk of strongholds we are talking of wrong ideologies we are talking of wrong ideologies wrong philosophies that's what we mean by saying strongholds we are talking of wrong imaginations so the bible says for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god so i wanted to know that though we walk in the flesh but we do not fight against the flesh the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through god now if you read ephesians chapter 6 from verse number 10 the bible says finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might so apostle paul in ephesians chapter number six he was now introducing us to spiritual warfare and he says finally i want you to be strong in the lord and in the power of his might so ladies and gentlemen i want to encourage you that regardless of all the opposition that is against you i want you to become strong in the lord and in the power of his might so according to scripture paul is saying be strong in the lord and in the power of his might so if you want to become a victor in spiritual warfare you need to be strong in the lord you need to be rooted in the lord you need to be built up in the lord so be strong in the lord and in the power of his might so i'm here to encourage you as a servant of god that you need to be strong you need to be strong in the lord and in the power of his mighty verse number 11 goes on to say put on the whole armor <laughs> the whole armor of god now we cannot talk of the armor of god if there is no war So apostle paul is saying put on the whole armor once we talk of armor we are talking of a war we are talking of a battle so in this world i want you to know that the world is a war zone life is a battlefield we are in a war we are in a battle but our battle is not physical but our battle is spiritual our war is not physical but our war is spiritual so paul is saying put on the whole armor of god so if you want to make it in this life you need to put on the whole armor of god this is a series i will explain next week what we mean by saying the armor of god and what is the armor of god I will explain it next week but according to verse number 11 he's saying put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand so without the armor of god you cannot be able to stand against the wiles of the devil so the worst thing 
that can happen to anyone is to be in the midst of a battle and not be away so many people they are not even aware that there is a spiritual battle and such a person ends up as a casualty of the battle so you need to be aware you need to be alert you need to be conscious that we are in a battle life is not a playground we are in a battle so if you are ignorant you become a casualty of that battle you become a victim if you are not aware you become a victim and you'll be defeated in this life i want you to know that when we talk of the devil he is an experienced adversary he is an experienced enemy since the beginning he was in existence so the devil is an experienced enemy he is an experienced adversary no wonder why the bible is saying put on the whole armor of god because you are fighting an experienced opponent so you need to put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil so that you may be able to stand against the strategies of the devil when we talk of the wiles of the devil we are talking of his strategies so the devil has a strategy the kingdom of darkness has a strategy satanic agents have got a strategy against your life meaning to say each and every day the devil is strategizing to destroy your life he is strategizing to destroy your potential the devil is strategizing to destroy your influence so the bible is saying put on the whole armor of god and once you put on that armory you are able to stand against the wiles of the devil you are able to stand against every strategy of the devil against every scheme of the devil against every device of the devil i'm here to tell you today that as long as you put on the whole armor of god you will be able to stand against every satanic intelligence you'll be able to stand against every demonic intelligence and after today's message i'm seeing you standing against every devil's strategy oh glory be to god ladies and gentlemen verse number 12 the bible says for we wrestle <laughs> we wrestle not against the flesh and the blood you don't wrestle against the flesh and the blood but against the principalities against the powers against the, the rulers of the darkness of this world we wrestle against the spiritual wickedness in high places we wrestle not against the flesh and the blood but against the powers of darkness against the rulers of the darkness of this world we wrestle against the principalities we wrestle against the satanic dominions against the demonic thrones we wrestle against them now if you read the greek bible the word the wrestling comes from the greek word the palais and when we talk of palais we mean barbaric fighting we mean brutal fighting in other words the palais means it's a fight without rules so when paul is saying we wrestle not against the flesh and blood but against the evil spirits so it's a fight without the rules it means a brutal and barbaric fighting you need it to be violent no wonder why the bible says the violence 
shall take it by force. We are talking of barbaric fighting. We are talking of a brutal fight. In other words, you need to be a radical child of God. Be radical against the devil. Do you know that by now, some of you, you might have been married a way, way ago, but until now you are still single. But I'm telling you today, you need to rise up. You need to stand your ground. You need to engage yourself in a barbaric fighting. You need to engage yourself in a brutal attack. You need to engage yourself in spiritual warfare. But how? Put on the whole armor of God. So that you'll be able to stand against every strategy of the enemy. Don't tell me about the enemy's strategy. I don't need to know them. But one thing that I need to know is I need to put on the whole armor of God. Remember Paul at one time, he says we are not ignorant. We are not ignorant of, his, of the devil's devices and his schemes. Meaning to say, when Apostle Paul is saying he is not ignorant of the devil's devices and schemes, it means Paul, he knows the devices, he knows the schemes of the enemy. But we do not have a chapter where he listed the schemes of darkness, where he listed the devices of darkness. Paul was aware, he was not ignorant of the devil's devices and schemes. But he said, I don't have to waste my time explaining the devices of the darkness. But one thing that I need to know, as long as I put on the whole armor of God, I'll be able to stand against the devil. Hallelujah. The challenge that we have in today's church, we have got many believers who are devil conscious instead of being Christ conscious. Hallelujah. As long as you are Christ conscious, I want you to know that you are a victor. Refuse to be devil conscious, but be Christ conscious. I'll give you an example. Right now, I'm ministering. As I am ministering the word, the minister of the word, someone can actually sleep. I'm preaching the word, but you can see someone sleeping. And you begin to wonder, why is he or she sleeping? But when a demon manifests and screams, he wakes up. He's now alert. He's sober. And you will not sleep. Meaning to say that person is devil conscious and not Christ conscious. Do you know that we have got many people who are coming to church because of the devil, not because of Christ? Someone is here today because he knows that there is a deliverance session. But if there was not going to be any deliverance, that person was not going to come. So what brought him here is not God, but the devil. Because he wants to see evil spirits manifesting. Can I go deeper? Do you know? Let me tell you what is deliverance. What you call deliverance is not a deliverance. Because I've got a question. I've got a question. I've got a question. I've got a question. Why is it one person continues to manifest a demon even for one year? Why? You pray for someone. You pray for someone. A demon manifests. And you claim it's deliverance. Next Sunday, the same person manifested a demon. The following Sunday, the same person manifested a demon. In a year passes, same person manifesting a demon. And when a demon manifests, every congregant is rejoicing. In our church, there is deliverance. The man of God is anointed, is full of power. But let me tell you, there is a great difference between a manifestation of a demon and a deliverance manifestation of a demon 
does not guarantee deliverance. When the power of God begins to move, demons, they manifest. But the manifestation of a demon is not a deliverance. It's a deliverance. It's a deliverance. The reason why a demon is manifesting, it is manifesting because of the presence of the Lord. It is manifesting because of the anointing of God. So when the anointing moves, a demon cannot contain it and it manifests. It begins to cry. But that's not deliverance. So what we do now, when a demon manifests, we need to cast it out. Because Jesus commanded us to cast out evil spirits. So a demon manifests. But after manifestation, I have to cast it out. I, I have to rebuke that spirit with authority. But the casting out an evil spirit is not enough. Because according to the words of Jesus, when a demon comes out, it goes to dry places. But there is a time when that demon comes again. And when it finds out that there is nothing, you are empty, you are empty, it goes and takes with it more seven demons greater than it. And the second situation will be worse compared to the first situation. So, if you want a total deliverance, it's not about a manifestation of a demon. If you want a total deliverance, it is not about a man of God casting out an evil spirit, no. But if you want a total deliverance, you need the knowledge of the word of God. So total deliverance only takes place with the knowledge of the word of God. No wonder why the Bible says study the word of God. You need to read the Bible. You need to study the word. You need to meditate on the Holy Scriptures. Because it is only the word of God that can bring total deliverance. Because without the word a demon can manifest. A demon can be casted out, but it will still come back. But a total deliverance only takes place as a result of the word of God. Do you know that evil spirits, at many times, they influence people not to study the word of God. When was the last time you opened a Bible? And you begin to read it. The reason why you don't read the Bible. The reason why you don't start the scriptures. It is the devil that is influencing you. Not to study the word. Because the devil knows. That in the word. There is a total deliverance. The devil knows that there is a power. In the word of God. So he would make sure. That you will not study. The word. The reason why majority of Christians again. Do not tithe. It is because of the influence of darkness. We are in 2021. We are now in March. The third month of the year. But until now. You haven't paid your tithe. And you claim to be a Christian. We are in a new year with a new resolutions, with a new theme. You need to change. We are in the third month of the year. Until now, you haven't paid your tithe. Only 10%. You don't tithe. It is not your fault. 
it is not your problem but it is the devil who is influencing you not to tithe because the devil knows that when you pay your tithe there is a blessing that is going to come on you the devil knows that the floodgates of heaven will be opened and God will pronounce a blessing over your life and you will not be in a position to contain it no matter how much we try to teach you as long as you are being influenced by the devil you will not pay your tithe and every time when the coordinator is saying pay your tithe you become angry you become furious it's not you but it's an evil spirit inside of you but when that evil spirit goes you are able to obey the voice of god but as long as you are controlled by evil spirits you will disobey god the reason why you are disobeying god is not your problem but there are forces of darkness that are influencing you to disobey god some christians they are comfortable coming to church but not serving a department what they don't realize you are being influenced by evil spirits when you come to church you feel comfortable coming to church you sit on your chair the man of god preaches to you after church you go home and to you it's enough there are many departments many serving departments in the church but you don't join some of you are good singers but you can't join the present worship why the devil will influence you he will make sure that you will not join the department there are many departments in the house of god you can be an usher you can join the hospitality and the decoration team you can join the it department we were having challenges with sound today and some of you you are experts in sound engineering but you don't join the department it is not your fault the devil will make sure that you will not serve god in his house because he knows once you serve god in his house there is a special blessing that will come on you so there are many good things which you are supposed to be doing and the reason why you are not doing all those good things it is because the devil is stopping you to do those good things you know yourself i can do a b c d i remember sometime i was teaching you to wake up at midnight to pray these days i no longer send those messages why i no longer remind you why because i believe by now you are mature by now you must wake up on your own but some of you you don't even wake up at midnight to pray you don't even wake up yet is the devil stopping you to pray because he knows that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much evil spirits can influence you to go to a wrong church you can be influenced by the devil to go to a wrong church where he feels comfortable there are certain churches which do not believe in healing they don't believe in miracles they don't believe in deliverance and the devil will allow you to go to that particular church because he knows that as long as you go to that particular church you remain under oppression and if you ask that person why are you going to a church where there is no deliverance where there is no healing where there are no miracles he will tell you that's our family church but look at his life his life is a disgrace his life is a disappointment there is nothing to celebrate and you wonder you wonder why go to a wrong church yet there is a church which believes in the word because it is only the word that can set you free you need to attend a bible believing church so the devil has got many strategies 
Remember, Paul is saying, put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. So the devil has got many strategies. Today, our service started late. Why? It's a strategy. It's a strategy. It's a strategy. We know him. We know him. If you don't come to church more often, you are a candidate of satanic attacks. You are a candidate of satanic attacks. Your business will be under attack. Your finances will be under attack. Especially if you don't attend services regularly. If you want to live a life of prosperity, a life of greatness, you need to attend our services regularly. You need to attend our Sunday services. You need to attend our midweek services. But the devil will influence you. It will influence you so that you come once in a blue moon. But be a regular worshiper. So according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 13, Paul says, they are for take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So according to verse number 13, there is an evil day waiting for you. But you put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to stand your ground on that particular evil day. So the devil he strategizes. For example, the day that you were involved in an accident, it was an evil day. But when you are putting on the whole armor of God, even when the evil day comes, you will be able to stand your ground. So according to the devil, or in the kingdom of darkness, they strategize. There is an evil day which they have plotted to attack you, to attack your children, even by sickness. There is an evil day waiting for you. So according to Paul, he is saying, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. To withstand it means to stand your ground on the evil day. Because even if a witch comes to your house, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Because you are putting on the whole armor of God. There is an evil day waiting for you. The devil wants to attack you. The devil wants to kill you. The devil wants to destroy you. He wants you to live a life of pain. But put on the whole armor of God. So that you may be able to stand your ground. From today, refuse to be afraid of the enemy. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are a child of success. You are not a child of failure. Put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to stand on your ground. I am not afraid of my enemies. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, oh, even if your enemies shall come in one way, they shall run away in seven different directions. The reason why they are running away it is because you are putting on the whole armor of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care that there are satanic meetings against your life. I don't care that there are satanic gatherings against your life. But as I'm preaching right now, by the apostolic mantle over my life, I silence every satanic voice. I reverse every curse in your life. I'm here to encourage you by the Spirit of God that put on the whole armor of God. I am not afraid of the devil. I am not afraid of witches. I am not afraid of mermaids.
I am not afraid of marine spirits because my Bible says when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against the enemy. I can feel the anointing now. Uh -huh. I can feel the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is ready to set you free. Angels are ready to set you free. Oh, Mandala Bashakata. They are warrior angels in this place. They are ready to set you free. As I'm ministering right now, the Holy Ghost is raising a standard against every force of darkness. I don't care what the devil has done in your life, but today we are about to defeat him. But today we are about to resist him. Today it is your day of celebration. It is your day of visitation. It is your day to achieve your greatness. Hallelujah. If you read in conclusion, First Peter chapter number 5, verse number 8 and verse number 9, you hear Apostle Peter saying, be sober. <laughs> He's saying, be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a rolling lion take note the bible is saying he walks about like 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 a lion meaning to say the devil is not a lion he walks about like a lion so he is not a lion but our lord jesus christ he is the lion of the tribe of judah Am I talking to someone today? So he says, be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But the Bible goes on to say, resist him. <laughs> Do I have radical people today who are ready to resist the devil? The Bible is saying, resist him. So you see, the challenge that we have in the body of Christ, we have overrated demons. Deliverance is not sophisticated, no. Deliverance is not even complicated. Deliverance is simple. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because the devil is walking about looking for someone to attack right now as we are seated here the devil is walking about he is looking for an opportune time to attack you but apostle peter is saying fear not but resist him are you ready to resist the devil are you ready to resist his satanism are you ready to resist the witchcraft myself i'm ready i don't know about you are you ready to resist the devil now, the word resist, if you read in the Greek Bible, it means to withstand. Remember in Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to withstand him. So Peter is saying, resist the devil. So the word resist, it means to withstand. It means to oppose it means to stand against so when peter is saying resist the devil he is saying withstand him oppose him i don't know are you ready to oppose him are you ready to stand against him ladies and gentlemen he goes on to say be vigilant now to be vigilant it means to be watchful to be vigilant, it means to be alert. To be vigilant, it means to be on the lookout, especially for danger. So, Peter is saying, be vigilant. In other words, be alert. Be sober. Be watchful. Be on the lookout, especially for danger. Be on your guard. That's what Peter is saying. And the reason why he's saying be on your guard. It is because the devil is seeking after your life. So he's saying be on your guard. Be 
be alert be vigilant be watchful be on the lookout because he is after your life he is after your family the devil is after your job the devil is after your business but be on the lookout be watchful hallelujah i want you to know that the devil he wants to attack you he wants to destroy you because he is a ruthless opponent i want you to know that the devil he is very wicked the devil has got one mission and his mission is to steal his mission is to kill his mission is to destroy but the mission of our lord jesus christ is to give life and life in abundance hallelujah so the devil if you read john chapter 10 verse number 10 the bible says the devil is a thief he came to steal he came to kill and he came to destroy he wants to steal your joy he wants to steal your happiness he wants to steal your finances he wants to destroy your life but glory be to god because of what happened on the cross the devil was defeated on the cross meaning to say he is a defeated enemy ladies and gentlemen i'm here to tell you that every battle you are going to face against the devil that battle is a delayed match because of what jesus did on the cross hallelujah so do not be afraid of the devil because it's a delayed match it is a delayed match i said it is a delayed match the devil was defeated two thousand years ago and today we are also going to defeat him because he's a defeated enemy i'm here to declare by the apostolic mantle over my life that no demon can stop the plan of god for your life i said no man can stop the plan of god for your life no force of darkness can stop the plan of god for your life you are not hearing me i said no witch i said no wizard can stop the plan of god for your life no marine spirit can stop the plan of god for your life you are not hearing me allow me to declare now by the spirit of god i am here to decree under the anointing that there is no generational case that can stop the plan of god for your life there is no avenging spirit that can stop the plan of god for your life i am here to decree and declare that in 2021 it is your year to rise and you are rising above every challenge you are rising above every predicament you are rising above every force of darkness as i speak right now i release the fire because my bible says our god i don't know your god but our god he is a consuming fire ladies and gentlemen if god is a consuming fire may the fire of god consume every altar of darkness and may the fire of god consume every vessel of darkness i am declaring the fire of god right now the bible says if god be for us who can be against us i am looking for those who are ready to team up with me and say men of god we want to defeat the devil we want to defeat every contrary spirit in the name of jesus christ if you read the first corinthians chapter number 15 verse number 57 i love this portion of scripture it says but it thanks be to god who gives us the victory through our lord jesus christ i am here to prophesy today it is your day of victory i say that today it is your day of victory that job is yours that promotion is yours today it is your day of victory that contract you are going to get it that tender you are going to get it today it is your day 
of victory but thanks be to god who gives us victory through our lord jesus christ because of jesus victory is certain because of jesus testimonies are coming because of jesus breakthroughs are coming because of jesus opportunities are coming as i see you right now i see opportunities coming your direction by the grace upon my life i call opportunities to find you destiny helpers are coming the right people are coming the right person to marry you is coming i decree and i declare your body is the temple of the holy spirit it is illegal for sickness to remain in your body as i speak right now let every sickness disappear let every illness go because your body is the temple of the holy spirit i am here to declare that in this year of 2021 with your eyes you shall see the impossible becoming possible it is going to happen it is going to happen we want to pray we want to pray everyone today who is under the sound of my voice the Lord is ready to set you free. The Bible says when the Son of Man sets you free, you shall be free indeed. There is going to be serious deliverance that is about to happen. There is going to be serious healing that is going to take place now. The devil is a liar. The devil is a defeated enemy. He was defeated on the cross. It's your right to enjoy life. It is your right to be a success. It is your right to prosper. We are about to defeat him today. I'm going to pray for you today. And I know that the anointing of God is going to move. But before I pray for you, according to Paul in the book of Ephesians, he said to put on the whole armor of God so that you would be able to stand your ground against the wiles of the devil, against the strategies of the devil. And the Paul is speaking of an evil day that is coming. And he's saying, make sure you are putting on the whole armor of God so that you would be able to withstand him. In other words, you'll be able to stand your ground. Today, you need to stand your ground and defend your family. You need to stand your ground and defend your children. You need to stand your ground and defend your job. Defend your business. You need to defend your children. Apostle Paul is saying, so that you'll be able to withstand on the evil day. You'll be able to oppose him. And Apostle Peter concurred with Paul. And he said, be vigilant. Be alert. Be on the lookout. Be watchful. Because the devil is walking like a roaring lion. He's after your life. He is seeking after your life. He wants to attack you. He wants to destroy you. But he goes on to say, resist him and stand your faith. In other words, oppose him and stand your ground. So before I pray for you, I'm going to pray for everyone today. But before I pray for you, I want you to stand your ground. If you are a woman, be like Deborah, the mother of Israel. She stood to her ground. I want you to stand your ground. And you say, enough is enough. I cannot continue suffering like this. I cannot continue struggling like this. No. 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 But it thanks be to God who gives us a victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Open your mouth now wherever you are. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. 
Resist the enemy. Resist the enemy. Resist the enemy. Resist the enemy. Yakata la bashakata. The devil is a liar. The devil is a loser. The devil is defeated. You are going to conquer him today. You are more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus. You can do all things. Through Christ Jesus. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray right now. Now unto him. Who is able. To do exceedingly abundantly. Above that which we may ask or think. According to the power. That worketh in us. Begin to pray right now. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You cannot continue suffering. I am here to pray for you. You cannot continue suffering. As long as you are under the sound of my voice. Today is your day. It is your day of great deliverance. It is your day of healing. It is your day for your miracle. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray right now. You are a solution to your family. Ah, you are the answer to your family. You are in that family for a purpose. You are in that family for a divine reason. God has planted you in that family for a purpose. Deliverance is going to happen today. Begin to pray that justice shall be delivered through the knowledge of the word of God. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Somebody can you pray? Raise your voice. Somebody can you pray? Raise your voice. We wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but we wrestle against the principalities. We wrestle against the powers of darkness. We wrestle against the spiritual wickedness in higher places. Oppose the devil. Stand your ground. We stand him today. I am putting on the whole armor of God. Begin to pray. It is your year of greatness. You are supposed to rise and shine. It is your year of excellence. Begin to pray. God has remembered you today. Mandala bakata la bakata la bakata. As you are praying right now, deliverance is taking place. The justice shall be delivered through the knowledge of the word of God. Worship him now. Worship him now. Worship him now. Worship him now. Listen to me. Today, Mandele Kata. I am going to pray for you. And I know that something miraculous is about to happen. <laughs> something is about to happen in your life. Who are you mounting before Zerubbabel? What is the cancer before you? What are fibroids before you? the devil is a liar today asthma has to go I believe it in my spirit sugar diabetes has to die today today you know what the spirit of God is ministering to me right now the Holy Ghost is ministering to me I know we are behind the time. I would want to stop the service. But the Holy Ghost is allowing me to continue. He's telling me now that there are going to be amazing miracles that are going to happen. What is the cancer before God? What is the barrenness before God? If you are here believing God for healing, healing is going to take place today. 
I know the God that I'm talking about. His name is Jehovah Rapha. I know what I'm talking about. There is a gentleman who found me on Friday. And every time he would go to the toilet, he was bleeding. His stool was full of blood. And I'm talking of liquid blood, like urine. And it happened for the past one week. So it was the wife who phoned me. So the wife phoned me and she told me what was happening to the husband. And she told me that the husband has gone to the medical doctors for some scans and endoscopy, etc. So Friday night, the husband phoned me and I prayed for him over the phone. He told me, Pastor, for the past five days, I am bleeding blood. I'm talking of a man. And I prayed for him over the phone. And I declared the healing. I declared the healing. And yesterday around 10 a.m. He phoned me and he said, Pastor, I went to the toilet and today no blood. <laughs> I know the God that I'm talking about. You see, deliverance is already taking place. You can see. Deliverance is already taking place. Today, I am going to minister healing by the Spirit of God. And today, we are going to break satanic altars. Today. The Bible says in the book of Numbers, there is no sorcery against Israel. There is no witchcraft against Israel. From today, witches shall know that your life is a no-go area. From today, you are untouchable. The Bible says you are the apple of God's eye. Whoever is against you is against God. Today, as your father in the Lord, I am going to help you to defend your territory. <laughs> you know, I, there is a strong anointing over me. I'm ready. The devil is a liar. In the realm of the spirit, I see demons running away. So I'm going to ask ushers to remove this puppet. We want to allow the fire of God to move. To those who know they are God shall be strong. And they shall carry out greater exploits. Cannot continue suffering. No. 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 Lift up your hands now. <laughs> and today, every stubborn spirit is going to go. We are going to break foundational altars. Ancient altars, we are going to destroy them. No. 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 The devil is a liar. 